All right, hey everybody. This video is hopefully gonna give everyone some really good helpful tips from my experience. I purchased solar panels and power wall last year in the summer. It took four months to install. We'll get more into that experience later. But more specifically, my recommendation on if it's now the right time to buy. Tesla's advertising the lowest cost in the country for solar at $1.49 a watt. It's not too helpful if you're not familiar with how that pricing works. Uh, but the main point is pricing is cheaper now and their panels are 10% more efficient in the last month. So for everyone watching this, my recommendation generally is that, yeah, getting solar now is the best it's ever been with Tesla, especially with Powerwall since they have new discounts that they didn't have before. Uh, they're better and faster at installing them. But the real truth that I want to kind of get across is that your return on investment potential for everyone really depends on the price plans that your utility provider offers because it's totally different. Even within Arizona, um, where I am in South Scottsdale, we've got two energy providers for utilities. One is APS, one is SRP. And it's your return on investment will be a lot faster with APS than it will be with SRP unless you know what you're doing. And it's a lot more complicated than just saying, hey, here's my bill, here's the production, here's what I use, and will that cancel each other out? That's probably how solar should be, but unfortunately it's not that simple here. So for everyone, please check with your utility provider. I wish I did because had I done that, I could have cut my payback uh, by years and I'll get into the details for everyone else that has SRP and are watching this video specifically for uh, that utility provider with the system. So with that being said, Tesla will not give you what I'm about to say in advice off of their website and they won't tell you in person and that's why I'm recommending talk to your utility provider. What you're looking at is the size system for my home which is 1,550 square feet. I, my average bill across the year is really high in the summer and lower other times of the year as you can imagine but averages out to about $170 per month. This is the system and the price point I wish I had paid and the configuration I wish I would have done, which was a small system with more storage. The reality the system I did buy was a medium sized solar system and one power wall. And that is a lot more expensive than this configuration. My recommendation for most homes is going to be at least two power walls and a small system and or medium sized system for reasons I'll get into shortly for homes that are at least you know 1400 plus square feet we even have uh i've seen people have a 4,000 square foot houses with with this same configuration because it does not make sense with srp to try and zero out your bill rule of thumb with srp your best bet is to cut your electricity bill by 50 to 60 percent that is the best savings for return on investment that you can possibly do and the reason for that is that all the electricity that SRP has when you have a solar plan, on, when you're on the best plan, because they have several and it's really confusing, is that when you compare it to the basic plan, which is between 11 and 13 cents per kilowatt hour and a $20 a month service charge, that's generally what I compare everything to because that's the easiest to understand. Electricity is pretty reasonable all time through all of the years, uh, throughout the entire year. That is the plan you wanna be comparing yourself to. So. Let me actually go back. So I ordered my system middle of last year. I'm actually going to pull up my actual contract with them. So I got an 8.19 kilowatt system, if you can see that, 21,000. And then it, here's the breakdown of what makes up that 21,000. Today, that's about 16,000. Uh, the storage system, the Powerwall is 8,600. Powerwall and tax, gateway charge, installation. And then they give a $200 discount for installing Powerwall and solar together. Today. That discount is $2,500 for installing solar and Powerwall. It's a really, really nice discount. Overall, this total all-in cost was almost $34,000. The other thing to keep in mind is that this should have been closer to 30, but I required a main panel upgrade that you don't find out in the beginning. That is something that they have fine print on the website that says there may be other fees that you're not aware of that will affect this cost. And that was something that they asked me later. Tesla called and said, hey, your panel is too old. You're going to have to upgrade it. It's going to be about $3,600. You want to do it. We'll lump it into the finance charge. And I knew I wanted solar and power walls. I said, just screw it. Do it. It'll take me a couple of more years payback, but let's do it because I knew I wanted that system. 
So this total cost was $34,000. And right now, based off of that calculation, my payback is probably 16 years, which isn't great. So if we take 34,000, multiply that by the federal tax credit, which was 30% last year, that's 23,800. Arizona does another $1,000 return on their tax credit. And then SRP gives a $3,600 check for anyone that installs solar, uh, a power wall, or for a, a backup battery. So this isn't exclusive to Tesla. You could do this with another company. It's not quite 3,600. And what I mean by that is, yeah, it's a check for 3,600, like a straight check you'll get several months after installation. But the problem with that is you pay tax on that. So it's income. So you're going to be losing probably six, seven, eight hundred dollars of that 3,600, depending on the income tax bracket that uh, you're currently in. So it's not the full amount. But let's say even if it was. So I have 19,200 all in costs on this system. And I was averaging and predicting to save about $100 a month. So with saving $100 a month, that would require 192 months straight of consistent savings. And that comes out to 16 years exactly. 16 year payback, that's almost the entire life of the solar system. And that's also assuming the efficiency is at 100%. So my payback may actually be slightly longer because these panels don't stay at maximum efficiency. They actually decrease in efficiency every single year for the life of the panels. And then you start to produce maybe 10 to 15% less as you start to get closer to the 20 year mark. They still retain a lot of efficiency, but at this point, this is a really bad payback. Generally you read online and you think of paybacks around seven years, five, six, seven, eight years. And this is just a really long time. Had I done the new system this way and gotten a small system with two power walls, my all in price, uh, at cash at 22,700. So if we looked at it that way and Tesla's looking at the price after incentives at 13,134, then let's add the main panel upgrade of $3,600 that I would have had to have done anyways. My all-in cost would have been $3,000 less, which goes to show you even though they reduced the solar and power, power wall discount by 2,500, uh, so that would be 2,300 more than what I paid, and then the whole system by 4,000. There's they they modified some of the installation and other costs so that the full all in is still uh, it's not like 6,000 less for me, it would have been about 3,000 less. So, for this at a hundred dollar a month savings, my payback is now 14 years, so two year difference in payback is a big deal right now. Um, just on a different configuration of system, had I done it. Uh, this way. So this is just something to keep in mind that the price and length of time for payback is going to vary depending on the configuration. And this is not something Tesla has a lot of information on. Um, they assume a $10 connection charge with SRP. That's actually $32.44. And uh, they don't go over the other plans because if you try and zero out your bills, so let's say your bill is $175 and you're trying to get that 175 to zero, the reality is SRP, when you have a solar plan, their price for electricity is incredibly low. It's actually about four cents on average per kilowatt hour compared to, let's say 11 cents on the basic plan. So just for having solar on the best plan to save the most money, your electricity costs go down by 60% on all other times. So that right there is an amazing, uh, discount. The goal is not to offset that because it's only four cents. In order to offset four cents per kilowatt, you'd have to produce so much electricity to offset that and spend uh, so much money for a bigger panel system that you'd never get it back because it takes you forever to earn back the bigger system. To go from four uh, kilowatt system to eight kilowatt doubles. It's over eight thousand dollars, and to offset. $8,000 requires 200,000 kilowatt hours over the life of the system to offset that. And that takes 20 years right there. So that's where it doesn't make sense. It makes sense to get the plan, which is the average demand uh, price plan, which is right here, and avoid the demand charge. They are able to reduce the electricity charge as low as possible because they have a demand charge. And let me go into the price sheet just to explain this really quickly. So. Super complicated, 
This is why Tesla doesn't educate you on this stuff. This is something you can go to SRP directly and they can make a recommendation based on your usage. But you're unlocking, we'll get into this in a second, but in the summer, you're only paying 4.6 cents on peak and then off peak 3.6 cents. That's cheaper than their electric vehicle price point. Their super off peak hours is over 5 cents to charge your car. On this plan, you're only paying 3.6 cents. It's amazing. That is literally cost me less than two dollars to charge my car often it's like a dollar to charge the my model three it's incredible but if you want to offset this a hundred percent it's it just doesn't make any sense to overpay for panels to offset a three cent per kilowatt hour charge you're almost basically investing to unlock this rate and trying to pay using the power walls to avoid their demand charges. They can charge these low rates because they know you are going to have a huge demand charge to overcome basically very little profits for SRP. They're, they say they claim uh, their, their rate that they pay in their cost for electricity is about 2.8 cents. That's why on some of the other plans, they only credit you back 2.8 cents because their argument is, why should we pay you more than what we pay for electricity when you're producing it? Um, so this just doesn't make sense to try and offset how cheap this electricity is. What you want to offset is this. This is the demand charge. There's two of them that have net metering. So every, all that four cent, three cent, uh, five cent charges during on and off peak throughout the year is net metering. So every kilowatt hour you use is offset for every kilowatt hour that you produce. The issue is that if you use any electricity beyond what you produce from the battery or from your panels and what you're withdrawing from your battery, they will charge you a ton. So in the summer, $19.29. If you average one kilowatt hour usage beyond what you can produce and pull from the battery, which is typically after the hours of five o'clock, which is really common when you want to run the AC. It's super hot. It's well over 100 degrees. And unless you have a battery to offset that, it's, you could run the AC for one hour. One hour without a battery or solar production. And if you average that one hour, you're going to get $80 charge monthly on top of all the other service charge of $32 plus any electricity that you used off peak. It's crazy. So the reason why we want to offset the demand charge is we want to use the power walls to supply the power in the times when the sun's not producing so that you can avoid these demand charge in summer peak. That's 2194 for averaging one kilowatt hour beyond what you're able to produce in the other plan which is not the average demand, uh, it's the customer generation plan, they will charge you per kilowatt you use beyond what you can produce, like $7 per kilowatt, like beyond. Like it's, it's just unbelievable, the charges. I didn't realize that and I ended up with a, I ended up producing more than I used and they hit me with a $60 demand charge for the month because I happened to use my AC for, uh, at one period of time, they take a 30 minute snapshot of your highest uh, amount and I use my AC and my, my electric range uh, at the same time for, it was like five kilowatt hours for once, one time, and it was $60. So that main goal is we need to eliminate the risk of getting this demand charge. And the way to do that is using your power walls. So the reason why I recommend two power walls is because two power walls can be charged with a small system. Like every week, the small system is producing uh, uh, if they even say it right here, the power wall capacity is about 13 kilowatt hours each, and the small system can produce 17 to 21 kilowatt hours per week. So every week, you're not usually using your entire capacity of your power walls because you just need them to supply you with energy for any overuse that your solar can provide during the hours of 2 and 8 p.m. So that's where I will always recommend no more than a small or medium-sized system because both of those will be able to charge the power walls. This, the, even though you could get away with a small one, having the medium system gives you a couple benefits. A, you're charging your power walls faster, and B, uh, it helps make sure that um, you're maximizing uh, your usage during the day. And if if have, making sure that if you are using a lot of power between two and eight, that, that you're going to be at full charge every week. The small system is assuming you have you know a lot of good sun low cloud coverage and if you're able to charge both batteries you're basically avoiding the demand charge all week and having two power walls 
basically allows you to draw 10 kilowatt hours max. Because right now, if you have one power wall, you can only draw five kilowatt hours, which is basically just like all of your appliances and the AC running. You can't run the dryer, you can't run your electric range uh, or anything else. You can't charge your car. Not that I would recommend charging it since it's so cheap off peak. But the point is it allows you to draw more power at once without worrying about needing to get like a load meter or anything like that. Uh, and then it will also, uh, two power walls will also be really great in a power outage because right now if your demand totally, um, if your demand is greater than what you're able to store, and yes, you avoided the demand charge, by eight o'clock your power walls may be totally depleted. So having a medium system may help make sure that your power walls aren't depleted. So if there were to be a power outage, you still have backup power. Right now with one power wall, I'm able to basically avoid the demand charge or make it really, really, really low. So I'm still saving a lot of money. But the problem is my power wall is nearly depleted because that's it. I need to use almost all my power to run the AC for like one to two hours at the end when my son isn't providing any solar between like six and eight o'clock. So my power wall is basically depleted. And if there were a power outage, I'm screwed. Luckily, this last week where we had a storm, there was a lot of clouds. My AC didn't have to run as hard and I still had 40 percent power and the power wall was able to um, supply me with enough power before the power was restored. So generally main takeaways is the average, uh, the average demand solar price plan is the best. Do not buy solar without a battery. Take advantage of the tax rebate uh, and uh, the rebate SRP gives you of $3,600. There's a limited number available left with SRP. They've, they have limited funds for that. And talk to SRP, not Tesla about the best plan that's right for you because it's not going to be what they have on the website. Right now from my address, Tesla's recommending I get a 12 kilowatt hour system and three power walls. And I have a two bedroom, 1500 square foot house. That is insane. And my payback would absolutely just be never on that. And I'd never get my money back. So don't listen to the calculator up here. I do recommend it. You just have to look at it a little bit differently. And I haven't had any issues with the panels. They've all been producing really well. Despite me having 12% of the shade, I'm able to produce well within the ranges that they said that I would. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the system, but wish I thought about this earlier. So my payback could have been a lot less than it was uh, currently. I hope this was helpful. If you have any comments, let me know. Make sure that you're getting referred. So you get $100. Uh, Tesla will pay you a $100 check to get solar. Um, I don't know if you can refer yourself. So that's one thing. You can refer yourself for the cars, but I don't know. You should test it out. If you already have a, a car and you don't have solar, you might want to try referring yourself. I don't know it'll work if they'll write you the referral reward on both sides. It does work for the cars. I can't say for the solar, but feel free and use mine if you want to, but use somebody else's uh, if you want that $100 reward. It does change throughout the year and that can save just a tiny bit extra money. And I'm sure you'll pay taxes on that too. So I hope this was helpful. My name is Robert. Enjoy your week and we'll talk to you in the next one. Take care. Bye.